St. John's is unique. This program with the great books. I haven't seen a curriculum like this anywhere else. I've been in school my whole life and I had never seen anything like this. The program was what initially caught my eye. Well, the first thing to notice is that it is a program. A very radical program which allows us to give people an opportunity to think things for themselves. The vehicle to do that is the books. The great books. Plato's Republic. The Iliad. Dante. Descartes. It's the books themselves. It's not textbooks. We all need to learn from all of the books. All our classes are small, they're all by discussion. St. John's is not affiliated with any particular religious denomination. We have two programs, a Master of Arts in the Liberal Arts and a Master of Arts in Eastern Classics. The Liberal Arts program in the Graduate Institute follows the progression of Western thought and consists of five segments. Within the segments, students will start usually with something Greek and end up with something modern. There's philosophy, theology. Plato and Aristotle. The Bible. St. Augustine's Confessions. St. Thomas Aquinas. We have a politics and society segment. Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau, de Tocqueville. The U.S. Constitution. Marx. There's a segment on history. History of the Peloponnesian War. The histories of Herodotus. Shakespeare. Hegel. Nietzsche. There's literature. The Odyssey. Don Quixote. And War and Peace. Dostoevsky. Faulkner. And then a mathematics and natural sciences segment. Euclid and Ptolemy. Galileo. Copernicus, Kepler. Newton's Principia. The origin of species. In each term, you get a chance to completely submerge yourself in one type of way of thinking and in one type of literature. There's something wonderful about that because then you can really focus on how one text responds to another text, even if they're separated hugely in time. People can take up to 10 years to complete that. You see teachers coming in the summers, you see somebody starting a program, and they have a family, life kind of gets in the way and they come back to it. With the Eastern classics, because there's a language component. Either Chinese or Sanskrit. They go straight through. You tend to start in the fall and it goes for three semesters in a row and it completes in the summer. It's a unique program, absolutely unique in the country, in that it's a program that that systematically covers the classic works of China, India, and Japan in one curriculum. Confucius, the Upanishads, the Mahabharata, where you can actually see them in a conversation with each other. You see how the whole connects. There's a sense that you're getting at some fundamental reality through everything that you read. It is contemplating some of the same questions we looked at in the Western program, but also considering non-being as an option. St. John's is a college with two campuses, a campus in Annapolis, Maryland, and a campus in Santa Fe, New Mexico. The liberal arts graduate program is available on both campuses. The Eastern Classics program is only available in Santa Fe. There's a lot of writing because writing is an important skill and it's a way we show that we have a personal relationship to the books we're reading. But the first thing to interest a person is this notion of people sitting around the table. What makes St. John's unique is that here we do our study through conversation. We all take part and grapple with the texts. An average class size is 14 or 15 students. It takes a certain type of person to really want to approach every text and just devour it and share that with everyone else and to be able to reciprocally listen to everyone else. You're here because you want to hear other opinions. I think a person has to be at a certain place in life that they seek it out. We have students ranging in age from 22, 23. I had one student when I taught in who was 86. I've had classes where in discussing war we have maybe a 50 year old man who graduated from the Naval Academy who has really strong opinions sitting across maybe a 23 year old anti-war activist female and they're talking to each other and I don't think they would be talking to each other outside of this place. We work together to try to learn from one another and not just from the person in front of the room. Our teachers here are not referred to as such, they're tutors. You think of a professor as somebody who's like, bah, 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 bah. We don't have any lecture classes at all. They're really here to help you learn for yourself. There's just a huge emphasis on trying to kind of confront yourself and stand up to yourself and, you know, the best version of yourself and also the worst version of yourself. The object here is for students to test their own views against their own reason and against their classmates and to turn the classroom over to the students. The Graduate Institute was in partly established to help teachers. To integrate some of the way that we teach at St. John's into their own classrooms. Our primary function is to ask questions. A good class, I'll find myself silent for the first 20 or 30 minutes before I need to say something to help focus the conversation. We're not there to give an interpretation as much as to elicit the ideas that the students have. When somebody says, well, look, this is the main thing that Plato is up to. Well, he might be telling you some very interesting stuff, but insofar as he just handed it to you, you're not going to value it very much. It, it didn't become your own. As opposed to having one professor up at the front of the room, we have 
15 voices around the table that are each giving and taking and sharing ideas. The emphasis in the Graduate Institute is more on seminar type discussions that go on for four semesters. The seminar is the heart of the program. The central body of the program. The seminars begin by the tutor simply asking a question. We're looking at the most fundamental questions you can ask. What can we really know? What is virtue? Can virtue be taught? What is truth? What is justice? Can you be pious and wise at the same time? What does it mean to be a human being? There's something really wonderful about the fact that students do all this preparation in the privacy of their own rooms and then come together with this group of people and think through the problem again and see it from new angles and have their own understanding questions. These books are so old, they're so strange, they're so mysterious. For myself, I could never understand them the way that I do after I've been with 18 other people. I'm thinking about it as a musician. It's as if you're practicing at home or reading the score. And when you sit down in the class with other people, it's as if the music comes to life. First our questions, our perplexities, and then someone will say, but maybe it means this. Something starts to happen, a sort of motion. Slowly you begin to build this, and it sort of takes place in the middle of the table. It's everyone gets together and contributes himself to this growing mass in the middle. It's changing and unfolding. It comes to life and it's magical to me. A good seminar is one that when you leave, you're not the same person anymore. Something has changed and you can't go back thinking the same way you used to. I come out of my classrooms feeling so energized and so inspired and you know, almost like walking on air. It always seems like immediately when you leave class, that's when you understand everything that's been talked about in the classroom, and that's when you really get excited and need to seek out your friends and talk more about what it was that you saw in the class. Because everybody here is doing the same program, we're all part of this one great big conversation. Your sense of community is grounded in a commitment to learning, not just for oneself, but together. And so I'd characterize this as a community of learning. A community of learning. A community of learning. Doing it this way, doing it with the great books, doing it with other people who have been in many different areas of life and have a lot of different things to bring around that table. It reminds you that the most important thing for you to do is to learn what it is to be a human being in the very best sense of that word. I can't tell you how many people after the first few weeks have come up to me and said, my soul was dying where I was working and this is what I need. When I graduated from college, I went and I started working in Wall Street. But then one day it was really clear to me that while I was expanding so much energy, the end goal was really unclear. But I think here we ask questions like why? Like why do I want to do this before I put so much energy into it? It's reminded me what I really loved, what I really wanted to be. And frankly, that probably wasn't a highly paid tax lawyer working for corporations downtown. I think maybe more than any other graduate program I could imagine, it gives you respect for your fellow human beings and for the real amazing and incredibly difficult questions there are in being a human being. I think most of us really realize what a privilege it is to do what we're doing and that that love and dedication really binds us together as a community for sure.